everybody, welcome to another episode of Small Talk. We are Thinker Themer. I am Maggie. I am the themer. I'm going to do it backwards. Uh, and this is Amy the Thinker. She's all about mechanics and how a game works from that point of view. And I am the themer. I'm all about the theme, the story, the world of the game and all that sort of stuff. Um, this series is a little bit different to our usual reviews where we kind of tackle those sides. In this series, we talk a little bit, well, we have a small talk uh, kind of topic mm -hmm. um, or topics. And then we also look through some of the smaller box games that we play that usually don't lend themselves to a, an in-depth themer uh, <laughs> analysis. exploration and analysis. <laughs> um, but they're still obviously fun to play. There's a lot so. to love in little games. Indeed, indeed. Um, but today I have collated uh, five questions from viewers. So mm -hmm. we go through some FAQs and there's a bit of a mix here. So let's just kick it off. Maggie has no idea what they are. No idea. The first question is from a viewer named Luke, who mm -hmm. um, ha has been watching the channel for a long time. And he asks about the game that goes against our thinker theme of preferences. Ooh. So for you, that would be a game that is not a strong theme, but you love it anyway. Mm -hmm. And for me, it would be the reverse. Okay. So probably my pick would be Coimbra mm. because I just, I really love that game. I don't know why, like I love the puzzle. I think it, it looks beautiful, but it, it makes no thematic sense when, no, you're, not when really. you're playing it. It's like, <laughs> it's really just like different colored dice with different colored cards and you're placing them in very clever ways. Like the, the interplay between all the elements is really fun and clever but there's absolutely no thematic thread or hope for one. No, and we've actually been to Coimbra and yes. there's no connection between no. like the Beautiful city. Beautiful artwork though. So I think that's probably what kind of, and the components are quite beautiful as well. I think that's what yeah. kind of does it for me. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sad that you're not like mentioning an abstract game that you absolutely love not a that thing. has no theme. <laughs> not a thing, there's no real. She doesn't love um, abstract. I'm not an no. abstract game sort of person. Yeah, I really struggle with them. I'm trying to think of my pick, uh, a thematic game that I love that I don't love mechanically. Oh, that's pretty hard. Mm. I like, I love, like Wingspan is a game that isn't one that like hooked me mechanically. I do appreciate the mm -hmm. kind of the tableau building aspect of yes. it. Um, I think it's pretty cool, but the theme I just really love and admire because it's so mm. unique and different. Yes. Another one like that is kind of Rococo Deluxe, which we reviewed recently mm -hmm. because I was so drawn in way more by the theme yeah. than I was by the mechanics because all the me there's nothing really too new mm. there um, for Rococo, yeah. but what you're doing is making dresses and that comes across so strongly with Ian O'Toole's art and yeah. all of those deluxe components. So for me, that is that has more of a thematic pool than a mechanical mm. pool. Um, yeah. And I just love that game. So that's kind of yeah, counter yeah. to that. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna to skip to a different question now because, um, so thank you, Luke, for that question. Um, the next question is kind of related because I mentioned in passing that we have been to Coimbra. Mm -hmm. And Aaron, um, another frequent commenter on our channel, um, he mentioned that we often talk about the fact that we've traveled a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he asked whether we travel for work or if that's purely just because we love to travel. Yeah. Um, he also had a, his comment was quite interesting because he said he hadn't traveled that much out, outside, of, hadn't traveled outside of the States, mm -hmm. um, United States. And um, he said that his wife was is really passionate about travel because uh, she was financially disadvantaged growing up and didn't mm. get to travel. And so now wants to kind of live out all those dreams of going to all these exotic places. Yeah. And I really resonated with that a lot, actually. I, I had a very financially disadvantaged background. I was the kid who, you know, couldn't, we couldn't afford, my mum, single parent household couldn't afford to send me to camp whenever there was like a camp trip to the snow or all of those like excursions mm. that you do get to do when you're young. Yeah. And so I'm really living my kind of <laughs> small child fantasy, um, you know, when we could mm. travel pre COVID. Yeah, there hasn't um, been yeah. any of that. Um, because, you know, everyone would know that like airline prices came down radically. It was, it was like it was the golden age for a while. Right before yeah. COVID hit. It was so it was, cheap. It was really cheap was... from Australia to get anywhere else yeah. in the world, which of course is probably more expensive in general, but it had come down quite a lot. Mm. And you, you are less passionate about travel when I met you, but because you were already living overseas. Well, so this is an interesting thing. Like I, like I, I'm not from a wealthy background, middle, middle class background, um, but, also single parents. So my mom 
did try to make sure that we traveled a bit, so like to kind of expose me to other cultures and things. So I did, I had done a fair bit of travel before, like in my, in my youth, and then I moved overseas. So I'm originally from South America, and then I moved to New York, and I studied in New York. And then after that, I sort of came to Australia. And so when I kind of settled into Australia, I'm like, yep, this is, this is home. This is, I love this place. I love the people. Um, yeah, even people were like, well, how come you haven't, you haven't left? I hadn't left. Like when mm -hmm. I arrived in Australia, I studied in Australia, migrated, became a citizen. And then I think I, I didn't leave for like nine years. Yeah, until I met you, I think. Yeah, the yeah. first time I left was after we got together. Mm -hmm. And then we went to, I think, Singapore was the first mm -hmm. trip that we did together. Um, and people were like, how, how can you, because Australians love to travel. Like it's yeah. one of those things. That because you, you, you have to kind of go overseas in order to go mm -hmm. anywhere different. Because I think like, unlike the United States where every, there's yeah. so much variation between states, um, even just climate wise, you can kind of yeah. and enter into- Culture wise as well. And culturally, and food, yeah. yeah and everything whereas yeah. here it's like you've got to get on, on <laughs> one of those like long all-day flights to get anywhere and it's still the same culture by and large it's not like the oh, food is different yeah, no i mean going, you have to go overseas yeah otherwise you're yeah. everywhere else it's is all the same. same yeah but um but yeah but what what i was trying to explain to people back then it's like well and yeah it's like well i'm technically traveling right now like i'm not yeah. from here <laughs> so i'm already traveling I'm already on holiday. so that's why i wasn't really missing the, the no. travel but then yeah with with you, like you love to travel. I do so love we to travel. travel We've lot. traveled a lot. I, I'm always driven by food when I travel. Mm -hmm. And so all of our trips are based around, you know, trying different street foods, going to different restaurants, like really chasing and different authentic experience often going into dangerous places without realizing because you're wandering into bad neighborhoods the absolute... because i've heard there was like one delicious pork bun yeah but like something. super authentic yeah. like from the actual like whole <laughs> yeah. uh, what is Old it like wall. yeah yeah so we've done a lot of that type of travel we go um you know we go to japan a lot because it's a bit closer it's to close, australia yeah. yeah um and yeah like i we love going to the states like Japanese. whenever we've gone to, to we the go states, to the states yeah. um a lot we have a lot of good friends in mm -hmm. Vegas has yep. kind of become like a little bit of a second home mm. to us over there. Yeah. Um, and where else we we go? We love Taiwan is somewhere mm -hmm. we've been, and we love and, and we go to Mexico. If you know, it helps that Maggie speaks Spanish, obviously. Yep. Um, and we've Mexico. been to Mexico Mexico's a few great. times, and we yeah. love it there. Yeah. Um, just amazing the, the food, food culture. Is amazing just people. Like yeah. it's just. Yeah, we so, do love yeah. Mexico and great art. Yes. Love the art, and we're and looking forward culture. to getting back to back to travel. Mm -hmm. um, yes, but yeah, for now we're I'm just sorry. kind of mm. chilling and traveling around Australia as much as we can, but yeah. um, mostly just staying at home. Mm. Yes. <laughs> um, so the next question is by Sergio, who asked about inserts and whether we buy them and mm. what we think of them and which ones, but we don't really buy them. Well. How we? I think we only have like maybe two or three inserts. I, yeah. One was for Feast of Odin, and that was a friend of ours that gifted it to me as mm -hmm. a birthday present, mm -hmm. which I love. Mm -hmm. I, lo I can't emphasize this enough. Like I love, love, love inserts. Yeah, but we, we, we don't have a lot of them though. No, and I try. I've dabbled into trying to make yes. our own. So like Out of getting foam core. yeah foam core and then kind of figuring out the measurements. I've tried to download some of the templates because obviously in BGG, people post the ones that they've done. I've watched several videos on how to do it. I really, really enjoy it. It's like a, it's like a sitting down crafts. Uh, sort of, and my dad was an architect, so I kind of feel like there's elements of that um, in there, but um, it's just the time. Like it's still, it always takes so much <laughs> yeah. time and I just feel like I never have enough time to do all of these fun things that I want. But yeah, inserts, one of my favorite things. There's a satisfaction of mm -hmm. making everything fit just so, um, or figuring out like, how am I going to split these things so that they fit? There's also just, it makes it so much easier to like set up the game and to mm -hmm. pack it up. And it's, ah, oh, it's just, they are Can't wonderful. I don't, things, yeah. but we don't have that many of them. There are a few games no, I wish that are sitting on our shelf. Actually, I was, I opened Anachrony today and I was just like, <laughs> yeah, there's like why no. do I not have an insert for this? This is yeah. the original Kickstarter box. Mm. And um, so I probably need to get one for that. But it's just, I, I think like the cost of them, that's the thing that always holds mm. me back is because sometimes they're almost as much as buying another game. And yeah. so that's probably why we haven't <gasps> Actually, many of the one that I'm just thinking of, we did when we got Trickerian. Yes. Uh, it came with the, with the, what's it? 
Well, well we, we bought it from our friends uh, Mark and Phoebe yes. at Ludo Cherry, and they yes. actually love Trickerion, and so they'd already put the broken token yes, uh, insert, insert like in the it. Beautiful, and it's what's just, the balsam it's just wood? Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's wooden. Oh, it's just amazing. beautiful. Yes. Anyway, so that, that's where we're at with inserts. Mm. Um, Darlene asked about our logo. We often get mm. asked um, what animal it is, so just to put that out there, it's a kangaroo. It's a kangaroo. Um, and the kangaroo is, we came up with the idea um, together, which was about the dichotomy of Thinkathema. Mm. Um, one half of it is more monochrome. It's more, um, what do you call it, with the shapes? Uh, like geometric. Geometric, mm -hmm. thank you, that's what I was looking for. And the other side is more of an illustration. It's got color mm. and kind of- Fluid. Yeah, yeah and, that, and to us that really speaks to Thinkathema and our different ways of mm. um, approaching games. And so we came up with the idea. We did not illustrate it ourselves. We, um, know, no. our, we know our boundaries. We do not have that um, talent. No. You're good at painting, <laughs> like painting Barely. minis. Um, anyway, but so we found someone to, yeah. Yeah, to illustrate that for us. Mm. Um, but yeah, we came up with the concept ourselves and we thought it should be a kangaroo because, you know, Australia. Yeah. Australia. Australia. Yeah. Um, uh, so that's the story behind our logo. Mm. Um, and then the final question is, by, I'm sorry if I get this wrong, um, their handle is Sisuus. Sisuus. And, and, and they ask about the board game scene in Australia, mm -hmm. um, which we have to say that we live a little bit out of, um, out of the city of Melbourne. And so we are not that involved in any like public board game groups no. per se but we have especially when we got early into the hobby we like tried searching for different cons and little events that were happening and mm. game days um there's not that many of them no. it's yeah. definitely growing here like mm -hmm. it is in the states and everywhere else in the world yeah. um board game is board gaming is on the rise You're, we're seeing more and more uh, game shops open but they're still not as for, like there's not as many of them yeah. as in the states like when we travel there we love finding all the local game stores mm. because they tend to have more variety they have more kickstarter games um yeah. probably more tables for gaming and that yeah. type of thing here it's still a little bit niche yes um and like even so the one of the bigger cons is um pax unplugged which is mm -hmm. everywhere but it's also it was here in melbourne and yeah. we went along and the the tabletop <laughs> gaming or the analog gaming component of that Con. So it's tiny. still so tiny. Yeah, it's really, it's really like small. Not even a tenth of, yeah, of the whole the, of the con. rest of the yeah. gaming con. Um, but anyway, that's thank you everyone for mm. kind of submitting. I'm sorry if I've um, missed anything. Please just send it through again in the comments. Let us know if you have any questions about us or about the channel, about board games, anything you like, and um, we'll do our very best to answer them in the next mm -hmm. episode. But for now, we should probably talk about some games. Let's talk about some games. Yes. Yeah. All right. So which one should we talk about first? Do you want uh, me to? Up, up to you. Well, I'll, talk, I'll start with uh, this beautiful little card game called Flock of Seagulls. Now, Flock of Seagulls is by uh, Comet Games, so it's very small, independent. Um, you should say publishers. it's not available yet. This not is not available yet. A Kickstarter preview. It's coming yes. um, to Kickstarter in spring 2021, I believe. So. Um, not our spring, but your you spring, which is very soon. Oh, yes. Oh, true. now, actually. Any, any moment any now. Any moment now. We don't have the exact date. But. This game is super simple, um, but the thing that I love the most about it is just the artwork. Like oh, just, so good. just like the little seagulls and the, um, I like the day that I got this, that I went to collect this from the, the post, I was having one of those like semi-funk kind of days and I just opened this up and this just cracked me up laughing. It just brought me so much joy, like this little guy, just like he just looks so friendly. But in the game you're playing, I guess you're, you're seagulls and you're trying to be the, uh, the most hogging type seagull, get all the cards possible. The deck is evenly distributed, usually be between the, the players. Mm -hmm. There's actually, it's not like, yeah, you all start with the same amount, mm -hmm. but then you're all kind of playing cards into the middle of the table. And then there's certain things that will make you uh, need to put your hand or be the first to put your hand and claim that, mm -hmm. that deck. And that's gonna be things like usually food, for example. So there's just like a seagull trying to pick at the food near the, near the beach. There's things like, you know, there's chips and then there's fish and chips and then there's, what is it, um, scallops or, mm -hmm. um, and sausage. But the thing is, it's not just about the first one to grab the food. Some of the, bit, the bits of food are either tainted or off. And so yeah, you can actually poisoned. get food, yeah, poison. So you can get food poisoning. And so with those ones, you're, yeah, you're but the, penalized. Yeah, but the trick is that the good food looks almost identical. Exactly. The illustration <laughs> yeah. looks almost identical to 
the food that's off or the food that you don't yeah. want to like slap your hand onto. Yeah. And so you've got to be really careful, which means you're just like very trigger happy on the like, oh, do I slap it? Do I not but slap it? Thematically, actually, that's very true to what I imagine the life of seagulls are. Like you're competing with all the other seagulls, whoever gets to, you know, put their beak in there first. Yeah. And you don't have that much time to make a decision. Is, is this going to make me sick or not? Can or? I tell you a little bit of a story about this? The worst time I ever got food poisoned, I was having fish and chips and yeah. I was eating eating this fritter thing and I was like this tastes really weird and <laughs> I don't know this story, yeah yes. and then in, in the end I was like nah even the tomato sauce wasn't saving it so yeah. I like threw it out to the seagulls and they backed away from it They're like, Ugh. they backed away from it I was like <laughs> Oh, that's this not good. Bad that's sign. not good. Fast forward a few hours and I was, no, oh, I've never been sicker. They knew. Um, but the seagulls knew. They'd been playing this for <laughs> long enough. They're like, nah. They were like, nah, oh, I'm not going to slap my yeah. hand on that. Yeah. Um, but the other cute thing is that there's all these little, that all the seagulls are wearing different colored shirts. Yeah. And when there's a pattern of three different colors mm. that come out, um, you also have to kind of slap and be yeah. first. So there's like quite a few things to pay attention yeah. to. There's a card where he's dressed as a pirate and everybody <laughs> yeah. has to yell out parlay. parlay. Yeah. And if you're the last one to do that, there's like a penalty. Yeah. Um, so there's just all these like really fun things. Very light, but very, very fun. Very light and yeah. great like as a warm up game. Mm -hmm. um, when we played it, it really energized the group. It had that kind of the same way that we use another small game um, called the cat cheese goat cat. Ta Ta is a taco cat taco cat goat cheese pizza that's it i always get the order wrong um but it's like if you've played that card game it's very similar in mm. that it's just a bit chaotic everyone's slapping down yeah um it is lots of fun but the artwork is just like so cute it's so cute and it's so really... it just puts me in an immediate good mood yeah and it sort of reminded me a little bit art wise to santa monica um, but I actually, this is going to sound like heresy and blasphemy to some people. I prefer to play this. <laughs> I had more fun playing this mm. than, than Santa Monica. Not that there's anything wrong with Santa Monica. Santa Monica is like, it's great as a sprawling kind of thing. Um, but it felt very light. For, yes. Yeah, I feel yeah. like if I'm going to play something light, there's going to be very Yeah, this is going to be easier and, to get to the table. Yeah, um, yeah it's certainly a, we'll keep yeah. it around for a filler and also to re-energize people between games. It's a really fun one. Yes. So, so um, keep a lookout for that on Kickstarter yep. in spring. Um, they're UK based, so yeah, yes. it will be very soon. Um, the next game is another card game, um, and this is in Japanese because mm -hmm. we bought this in Japan. But the game, if you're familiar with the box, you will recognize this as Six Nimit, um, a Wolf Gang Kramer game. It is, it's quite an old game. It is a numbers based card game mm. where you are all you've all got a hand of cards and you are placing down cards one at a time in a series of different rows mm. and everybody chooses the card that they're going to play and puts it down in secret and everybody reveals that card at the same time and then in ascending order you are putting those cards down into the rows where they kind of form the next in line but the little trick to that is if you end up falling off a line i.e if you are beyond the five cards that can go in each row you have to take that row of cards and ultimately you're trying to end up with as few cards as possible mm. and so it's just because those kind of count as points against you mm. um yeah they don't go back into your hand they're just points yeah. to the side um but it's just this game is such a classic game. If you haven't tried it, I'd highly recommend it. It's um, It's been a, a hit with everyone we've played it yeah. with. Um, it does, the good thing about this game is it's two to 10 people. Mm. And I take this to work and we play in a group of like eight or so. And it just, because everyone's doing it simultaneously and there's just that hilarity of in the bigger group counts, it's like, oh, I thought I was going to go into that row, but then mm. there's three other consecutive numbers that went before yeah. me and now I'm falling off this edge. Yeah. It's just like, it's so clever, so simple. It's so easy to teach. Yeah. I really, really, really love this game. Yeah. And you even yeah you I really find it. it and it's yeah, pretty yeah. like it's completely there's, abstract yeah that's so no pretty abstract yeah but um I think it's probably what is it that I'm into because yeah, there's absolutely no theme it's just numbers yeah it's it's a nice little it's an exciting it's not a puzzle but it's like a nice exciting little oh what's gonna happen with my number yeah, I'm gonna you don't make have to it be strategic row. about yeah. which cards there's, you play yeah, when a, there is some strategy yeah. some people are like oh this is all luck it's like no, no there's actually no, a strategy not at all there's definitely a strategy yeah. because you're kind of trying to mitigate against the risk mm. of someone putting a card down, but you can kind of work that out and mm. if you withhold yeah. cards. and Yeah, there's a whole strategy to it. Yeah. Um, I, I play this game a lot on BGA as well mm -hmm. because um, there's an advanced professional variant of this game where
where the cards can be either added um, on one end of the row or the other end of the row. You'd never play that in real life because it would just be a nightmare to maintain mm. and, and shuffle cards around. But online, that's actually really fun. So check that out if you haven't. Um, but yeah, that is Six, six Nimit. Nimit. Yeah, great little game. All right, the next game is Lost Cities. So Lost Cities is... <laughs> you, you haven't played this game as well, uh, that um, much. I played it a lot more earlier on. When so we this first is, got this it. This is something that has been in our collection for years. Yeah, this would be one I of the first games. I think we learned this at Meepleville, actually. I think yeah, this was one of the was games... It? Yeah. I thought it might have even been before that. No, I think... Pretty sure this was one of the games that we learned at Meepleville because it was like, oh, you know, two-player games. And, and I think Tim was like, oh, hey, you might like this. Mm -hmm. Um it's a great, yeah, it's a great two-player game. Do you want to talk a little bit about the mechanics and how? That, yeah, so you play it way more. I like, do. I play Lost online. Cities a lot. Again, I play this one on BGA. Sometimes people ask us what we play online. I tend to like really short, fast games that I can kind mm. of sneak in between work meetings um, and have a game. Um, but like Lost Cities is a game where you start with um, a few cards in your hand mm. and you're trying to play those cards down in front of you um, into what's called an X expedition i think although this game is not at all thematic at all no that's so basically, very much pasted on yeah every um expedition is a sequence of cards where once you place a higher card down you can't go on that pile anymore so it needs to go in ascending order but you're trying to gamble and buy time as much as possible to make that pile of cards worth as much as possible because um, every expedition that you decide to go on is going to be minus 20. And so that pile of cards is only worthwhile to you if you can maximize your score in that pile and, and have more than 20. So basically you're gambling when you start an expedition that you're going to pick up more cards that are that color or that suit and be able to um, make points from mm. it. Um, but the trick is that the, it's a two player game and your opponent also has cards in their hand and you don't know what those are going to be. And they're mm. also going to gamble on the fact that they can, you know, make a run of the same color, potentially cards. And so you're not sure who's going to pick up um, mm. the good cards of that color. And there's only one of each card from two to 10. You can also um, play other cards um, that allow you to double down on the gamble. So mm. you're going to lose more points if you don't, if you don't get over 20 it. points, yeah. but you double your points if you do. Um, and it's just a really fast game. Um, it says 30 minutes. I think I, yeah, I can play it in 30 minutes or less for sure, especially on BGA where it does all your scoring for you. Yeah. Um, that's the best thing about playing it on BGA. Um, but yeah, it's a re like, I love this game. I think it's just a brilliant game. It's it's Reina Knizia mm -hmm. design. Um, it's a really obviously famous designer of Cosmos Games. I love their two player games. Um, and yeah, this is one that I just absolutely adore. Yeah, it's a game that I enjoy. I don't actually play it that much anymore because um, I tend to play it more online. Because you play it online, yeah. and it's yeah, it's and a it's little like, abstract. It, it is abstract, so it's not what my preference or my go-to. But I do mm. enjoy it when I do play it. But that is Lost Cities. Lost Cities. All right, next game. Next game is Fleet the Dice Game by oh, Eagle yeah. Griffin Games. So this is a, a bit newer. Uh, we haven't ever played Fleet, the original game that I believe this was based off. Um, but no. this is the new Roll and Write version. Um, of Fleet mm -hmm. and um, we have been playing this a lot um, over the last couple of weeks yes. um, and I picked it up during a Kickstarter campaign mm -hmm. yep and um, yeah this one came with an, the new expansion and yeah. so we've been playing yeah we've been playing this a lot just just you and I actually yeah, we've been two like players, especially yeah. like late at night and um, in this game you are uh, basically fishing Yes. And you are able to have different types of fishing boats that relate to different uh, marine creatures. So different types of fish, yep. um, king crabs, mm -hmm. uh, oysters. And then there's going to be a fishing phase where you're going to be able to fill boats that you've mm -hmm. recruited along the way or, or developed along the way with fish. Um, but uh, as a usual, roll and write. There are lots of other things that you can do to build combos. You're getting income, yep. Yep. which then generate other combos. Um, building buildings. Yeah. yeah, activating buildings and, and, and the other things. Yeah. And there's like you have two pads of paper. So mm. instead of just one sheet of paper, you have um, two different sheets of paper. And um, there are just a lot of options here. But I, interestingly, at first I was like, 
I'm not sure about this game. Mm -hmm. And the more I play it, the more I really enjoy it. And now I'm almost, no offense, but I feel like I'm competing with myself now, just joking. Pretty much. <laughs> no, but actually, I am but actually like this. I can, I'm not a solo gamer, but in this game, I'm like always checking to see what my previous score was because I'm trying to outscore myself. And um, that to me is interesting because mm -hmm. I don't, I, I'm usually very driven by beating other, beating other people or competing with other people <laughs> and not, not my score. Yeah. And so, yeah, I found that really interesting. It, it's amazing how quickly it combos up as well. Yeah. Like you always think, oh man, I've only got a couple of fish. Like I, there's no way that I'm going to do as well this time. And then all of a sudden it just gets like this real momentum about it. And you're yeah. just like, I, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Like, I like when that happens. I still feel like I don't have probably, that's why I'm not very good at it. I, I like, as I'm playing it, I don't, I always feel like, why don't I have enough fish? And I do tend to spend a lot of time with the buildings and stuff, but yeah. I do not make the best out of the optimizations and, and all that. And so I, I kind of, I enjoy it, but I don't necessarily love the experience. Mm. And I don't know if it's because, yeah, it's like, I don't know, whatever part of your brain gets activated for this particular puzzle is not a part that's well developed or uh, very well exercised in it. Yeah. I, I think like with all Eagle Griffin games though, it is it's such a, the components are beautiful. Yeah. The die, the dice are the beautiful. The dice are beautiful, yeah. yes. I really like the, the two different pads and the illustration. Mm. It's really, really like top notch quality yeah. roll and write. Yeah. Um, and, and if you like a game where it's just combos out, like sometimes that's really not for us. Like we have a few games, like one I think of is like underwater cities where once you've got like a tableau of cards, it's just like, oh, and then this triggers that and then this and then this and then this. And sometimes that can get a bit where like, we're not a huge fan of that type of game. Mm. Like something that triggers something mm -hmm. else combo yeah. wise. This does a lot of that, but I, I don't find it too overwhelming to keep track of. Like no. on the income track, we're like, okay, now I've got two yeah. extra things to do over here. And then that triggers that and that yeah. triggers that. Um, so there's a lot of that if you're into that kind of style of game. Mm. Um, we also played with the expansion. I like, I don't think the expansion's necessary. It didn't In really, fact, I, I didn't, didn't, I didn't really use it much. The little uh, fishing village. Is that yeah, what it, yeah. Yeah. I used it a little bit, made no difference to my score, <laughs> but if anything, I got worse. <laughs> um, yes, but, um, but I, I enjoyed it. Like I, I enjoy playing with it. I don't know that this would be my favorite, um, roll and write. And I think, I think I'm finding that this just, it's like my tendencies with roll and writes are that I, I just don't find the roll and write puzzle in general mm -hmm. all that enticing. Yeah, you're not a huge roll no, and write person. No. Yeah. So that's more of like a personal preference thing. Than, yeah. yeah. But I, I think if you are into roll and writes and you like that kind of combo feeling, that feeling of mm. satisfaction of like triggering lots of combos, I think a lot of people will find a lot yep. of love with this game. Um, and it's such a, it's a lot of game in a little box. Beautiful um, production, as you said. Beautiful yeah. production, yeah. yeah. So that is Fleet, Fleet the, dice, the game. dice Game. Um, and the last game we want to talk about today is Shobu. Shobu. Do you want to do the introduction? I don't know if I should, because uh, it's incredibly abstract. It is a beautiful game. Um, we were actually talking about the components with our friend Jazz. Um, oh, yeah, Jazz in the Lobby of Hobbies. We filmed earlier today our top 10 components from games. Yes. Um, and because we we're just thinking about how deluxe this, this game is, um, go over and check out that video. By the mm -hmm. time this launches, that will be live. So we'll link yes. to that somewhere in the corner, somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Somewhere. There'll or be a link the description as to well. go check that out. Yeah. But um, sure. yeah, so it's a game that is just visually stunning. The components are just beautiful. Very simple but very elegant uh, these you have these beautiful wooden boards you have this like amazing uh, amazingly tactile um, and just like smooth uh, like what did you call them like river, river stones, stones. Yeah, yeah, river stones. yeah yeah because they're just so smooth and so beautiful and it just makes you feel like it makes me feel so zen just looking at the components and then you have this rope as the divider between the the boards of the of the two players obviously it's a two-player game mm -hmm. um but and um it's uh it, what what's the game like what is it actually yeah How do you so play it? It, it it's completely abstract yes um and you have a rope that divides the two players and basically what you're doing is you're taking a passive action where you get to move a rock on your side of the rope and um your colored your colored stone on your side of the mm -hmm. rope and then you get to do an aggressive action which is where you are able to push the other player's rock off mm -hmm. a board uh, if you can 
on the opposite colored board. So there's kind of like two ways to think about this game. It's like everything passive has to happen on your side of the rope and then every aggressive action has to be reflected from on, on an opposite colored board to your mm. passive action. So it's just it's a couple of really simple rules to get your head around, but the depth to this game is absolutely incredible for such a simple concept. You win the game if you can completely knock your opponent off one of the four boards. But mm. what happens is the relationship between the passive and aggressive move gets really complicated because sometimes there's an aggressive move you want to make to knock um, one of their rocks off the um, off the board, but you actually can't do that. You can't mirror that move with the passive action, which means that because the passive and uh, passive and aggressive actions need to be mirrored. I didn't even say that, but mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a really interesting game. If you're into abstract games, I would 100%, if you haven't yeah. found this game, go and find yourself a copy. It, it has beautiful deluxe components. Um, Maggie had not played this game until recently and I taught it to her and, um, She's not a huge fan because there's obviously it's abstract, so there's no theme. We yeah. won't go on and on about how Maggie hates ab abstract games. But um, I play this game with a friend of mine who loves chess mm. and, and I love chess as well. But um, him and I, this game just gets so tense because we both kind of anticipating the other person's move and there's lots of just like subtle moves or like one of us will go full aggressive and um, it's just, it's a lot of fun. We play it over and over and over. And um, yeah, it's it's a great game. Can't recommend enough yeah. if you like abstract games. I think, yeah, if you like abstract games, it's got beautiful, elegant simplicity is what I would call this in mm -hmm. every way, shape or form. And the way of the gameplay was very quick and easy to explain. Mm -hmm. um, the, the design of it, the production of it is just very elegant. Yeah, and it really just opens up the more you play it. I think like most yeah. abstract games, once you've got the, they're usually quite basic, but then the strategy, layers mm -hmm. and layers of strategy kind of reveal themselves. So yeah, yeah Shobu is the last game on our list and oh look at that 40 minutes of talking nice um so that is everything were yep. you going to say something no ah i thought she was going to ad lib some additional content no i've got no content left <laughs> we're I've just all out of content run, is so that's run? the end of thinker thema you've reached the end of the channel yeah. uh, we have reached peak content we've and that is it content. that's all we had um no but if you're still watching thank you for uh watching small talk uh i know that lots of you know we've had lots of love for this series which mm. uh, we kind of weren't expecting because no, we just wanted a way to talk about just chat just yeah just chat just but talk about small box games because the our format of reviews doesn't really lend itself mm, well yes. to small box games yeah. so um, we're really enjoying ourselves we've got so many more small box games to talk about uh, we've got some big box reviews coming up uh, kickstarter previews mm -hmm. which we're excited about and um, yeah, we'll be back for back chat again next week. Yes. Um, yeah, so just really enjoying ourselves. Thank you so much for all of your support. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Uh, throw a, what were you gonna I was say? gonna say, let us know if you've got any other questions. Oh, because yeah. that, that's, what we're gonna be, that's what we use for the topics of small talk. So what else uh, would you like to know? Mm -hmm. Or what are, yeah. Other Within things reason. Are... Within reason. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but anyway, that's everything for this. So I um, hope you're all having a wonderful weekend and we will see you soon. Bye for now. Bye.